with Acer Switch 3 for full review. We're dealing here with a 2-in-1 device that was launched at the end of April. It obviously runs on Windows 10 and it's basically a combo of a tablet and its keyboard meant to replace a laptop. It's already got a pretty impressive award, the Red Dot Design Award and it's got a metal shell as you can well see plus a kickstand. And it's supposed to be sort of um, better spec in some areas, Chromebook alternative and also a cheaper Surface Pro alternative so to say. And also an alternative to the Lenovo Yoga. It was launched this month in June in the stores and it measures 10 millimeters in thickness. It's made of solid metal and it weighs 907 grams which means it's quite on the heavy side but for 12 incher that's to be expected. So solid build, the winner of the Red Dot Design Award and it's got big bezels up front which allow you to hold it properly when watching some videos or doing some other thing. Okay, so I'm going to log in. Okay, and enjoy the Windows 10 Pro experience. Now, we have big bezels here and a pretty nice kickstand which from what I've heard was one of the reasons why this device actually got that Red Dot Design Award. So here we go. You can actually adjust it at the angle you want. So I would say this angle is proper for video watching. And I would say this angle is ideal for drawing because this machine also has Windows Ink support and in tandem with a special pen you can scribble on it anything you want. Now speaking of angles and speaking of productivity stuff we have a keyboard and the keyboard looks like this it's very slim as you can see it has a pretty nice texture a very nice fabric here feels nice to the touch and a very strong magnet with pins in this area and connects to the tablet via the connectors at the bottom. So very strong magnets, here we go, a QWERTY keyboard that's not backlit which may be a complaint here plus a pretty generous touchpad you can see here now from what I thought it also has 10 point multi-touch and it can let you do selections and things like that left right clicks available as well and typing is done quite easily on this device as you can see in the combo of kickstand and the keyboard we're replacing the laptop in quite fine manner also when you're done you can take it like this and this will serve as a protection for your screen now speaking of screen we are done with the design we're happy with it we understand why it got the red dot design work so let's discuss the display now okay so password again Okay, so we're back here at tablenews.com to analyze the screen we're dealing with here. So a 12.2 incher, full HD, IPS LCD and the experience, let's check it out we're using our usual test clip, which is uh, this one, nope, this is music, this one here is our test video. Okay, so the experience is quite crisp and clear, I'm digging the colors, pretty okay brightness and pretty wide view angles. But this is more for indoor viewing because, as you'll see in a minute, the uh, brightness level is not very high here. Now that you saw the experience for yourself, let's delve into the actual details. Okay, so let's see what we're dealing with here for this screen. So first of all, the pixel setup, we're dealing with RGB stripes pixels as shown by the microscope we put onto the screen. And then we actually measure the brightness using a lux meter and achieve the pretty underwhelming value of 236 lux units, which is not impressive, but our actual usage experience indoors was okay. It beats the Asus Transformer Book and the Chewy V8, but scores below the Acer Aspire Switch 12S which we actually tested a few months ago. And these settings for the screen are the usual ones in uh, Windows 10, brightness, nightlight, and if you want to see more, we actually go here, power and sleep settings, and display, nightlight, nightlight settings, scale and layout, a resolution, orientation, and multiple displays are also available. Overall, a reasonable screen, but not exactly very bright as the lux meter has shown. Now, the specs of this device, include uh, among others well the intel pentium quad core cpu in this case and 4200 there are pentium and celeron versions of this device and as you can see you can alternate between tablet mode and desktop mode speaking of specs we also have uh, um, four gigabytes of uh, ram available here of the lp ddr3 kind as well as 64 gigabytes of storage and a micro SD card slot and somehow out of that 64 gigabytes of storage well we quickly ran out of it and we were left with around let's see how much I actually forgot how much so right now we're enjoying only 13 gigabytes so 
13 gigabytes out of 64 after only installing a bunch of games and also a bunch of benchmarks. Not very impressive. There's no lag here, there's typical Windows 10 functioning and we also did some gaming on this device, including uh, some gaming in Riptide GP2, which is a benchmark title, which totally flexes the uh, power muscle of the device. It's a benchmark game, we use it on all devices, and here we go. Okay, so tilt, pretty nice looking water, reflections and animations, of course we have integrated graphics, what else we have on an Intel Pentium device. I would say it looks mighty fine, and we also played more complex games like Blitz Brigade, and I would say that at first sight things are okay gaming wise. Now, no lag, okay gaming, not much to complain in this area, but we also did a bunch of benchmarks and uh, let's see what happened with those. So, benchmarks are here and we did quite a few of them and you can check them out here, you can also check them out in our full review. Things to remember here are that we do not have much term of comparison for the Acer Switch 3. Uh, I can only tell you that, for example, in Geekbench 4, we have the following scores, here we go, as you can see here, 1507 and 4600, which, well, if you want to compare to the iPad Air 2, they're quite close, that one had 1817 and 4533, the first one is below it and the second one is above it, but not by much. The best result is certainly in Sun Spider, once again confirming that Microsoft Edge is the browser to have, so 281. MS, one of the best results of the best browser out there. So we're doing fine in the benchmark area, close to the iPad Air 2, but um, also close and superior to the Lenovo Yoga Book, which we tested last winter, and that's not a bad feature. We also did a temperature test, and let's see what that came out. So here we go. After running the very intensive 3D mark, we got up to 32 degrees Celsius, which means there is no overheating here, and this is one of the cooler tablets we've played with. After all, having such a large body means you can also integrate uh, a pretty good design to dissipate the heat. Now, on the battery front, this 12-inch machine has a lithium polymer to cell battery inside, and in our video playback test, we achieved 7 hours and 2 minutes of playback, which is rather okay, maybe I wanted a bit more, but it beats the Acer Aspire Switch 12S which is sort of related to this device, if only in series, and I would say we are doing reasonably within the Acer range of devices. Still, we are below the Nokia N1 and the Xiaomi Mi Pad. Now, uh, we do not have uh, intensive benchmark tests on Windows 10. Uh, as far as I know, there is no type of uh, um, PC mark like we have on Android, not the same thing as far as I know, but with my regular usage I have to say that I've reached about 5, 6, sometimes 7 hours of continuous usage time. I'm talking about browsing, I'm talking about uh, Microsoft Office Word, Windows Edge, games and a movie, so basically 5, 6 hours of continuous work should be enough to lose all the juice on your device. And uh, the charging, well, it requires 2 hours and 45 minutes, which is pretty okay, and it's the equal of the Acer Aspire Switch 12S, and superior to the Acer Iconia 110 we tested recently. Now we also have some battery saving settings here, in which you can tweak, power and sleep settings, shown here, screen, uh, sleep, additional power settings, and other Windows 10 typical features, including a power saver mode. Okay, so we proceed further now, and we're dealing with the acoustics. We have two speakers at the front, one here and one here, with pretty discreet cutouts here and here, and I guess it's time to go to that folder again and listen to some tunes. Okay, let's put this down for a bit because it's quite heavy. Tap on it, and maybe play this tune here. Turn it all the way up. Okay, so conclusion, I would say the volume is satisfying, I like the bass, I like the amplitude, the high notes and the voice, we didn't have song with voice, but believe me, uh, that's quite okay, and if you don't believe me, we actually have a decibel meter test, which somehow does not confirm what I just said, 
because it's not very impressive although my own ear tells me we're doing fine so basically 87 decibels at the front and back with the audio sample and uh, when uh, we're listening to some other tunes um, for example at the top back side of the device which is so shown here 88.3 degree excuse me 88.3 decibels now when we went to youtube and listened to some prodigy yes youtube prodigy 84.9 decibels these are not very inspiring results but once again in real life it sounds much louder it certainly beats the acer iconia 110 we tested recently but scores below the nokia n1 and the chewy high 12. sadly no equalizer here now on the camera front this giant this 12 incher has cameras yes two cameras actually one at the front and one at the back this is the one at the back and sadly they're not impressive even by uh, 12 inch tablet standards that's the camera and the interface well we're started with the selfie okay so the interface is pretty typical for a windows 10 machine we got hdr we got a timer iso somehow they even put a shutter option here don't ask me why there's exposure and focus now the actual shots we took are underwhelming as you can see totally overexposed not very clear and with a bit of halo around them so if it's sun outside and even in indoor lighting you are not going to be happy with the results fingers crossed for skyping properly with the front camera okay now it's time for the connectivity on the connectivity front we have the following everything is set up in this area so it's very easy to interpret so audio jack a USB Type-C, full USB 3.0, a micro SD car slot and proprietary charging port and that's about it. Connectivity wise of course there is um, a Wi-Fi AC, Bluetooth and below we have the pins to connect the keyboard you saw before. And I have to say that the transfers were quite fast, you can connect an USB drive on this side. I'm guessing that the mouse and keyboard are also in the mix and keep in mind we do not have a 4G version here. Now the OS we're dealing with here is uh, Windows 10 Pro believe it or not and uh, let's actually try and uh, uh, access let's see for somehow for some reason we're on booking.com okay so let's go to tabletnews.com this time by the way this is the virtual keyboard in case you were wondering tablet news as usual the device and its browser are very fast by the way we have a new team don't know if you noticed it looks mighty fine on Microsoft Edge. Okay, so that's what the web browsing is about. This is Windows 10 Pro. As you know it, as you can find it on laptops, with the difference that we have a touch screen here and we have a tablet mode, which was famous back in the days of the Windows 8 and the uh, other derived versions. Okay, we have the action center, we have the menu area here, we have Cortana in the mix. And guess what? They also throw in one free month of Office 365. So yes, you can do your work in Word, Excel and PowerPoint. This is Word. You can take my word for it. I know it's a bad pun. And you can start writing a student report on this tablet. Downloading the template. And I guess it's time to bring back the keyboard. It's very slim. I'm guessing it does not have its own battery. It takes the juice from the tablet connects fast sorry for the loud bang then you prop open the kickstand and you start working on your school project and here we go you can add sources to your document sources automatically cited I'm moving around with the touchpad I'm also using the page down and page up things are looking mighty fine and you can type as fast as you can get the autocorrect going on okay we just wrote something on the screen don't know if you can see it but let's see we just wrote hey guys how's the weather King things are too white here because of the screen brightness anyways that's how you do some productivity things uh, on this device nope not switching to tablet mode so in the end it's windows 10 windows 10 pro the one you're familiar with but with an extra keyboard to use and an extra kickstand and you can pass between tablet and laptop mode whenever you want okay so i guess this is the end of the review unless you want to see the list of pre-installed thingies typical windows 10 stuff we have 3d paint by the way if you haven't seen 3d paint lately it's here uh, Paint 3D and I actually had quite a bit of fun with it courtesy of having the touchscreen, you know. New 
you can use those brushes, draw things around and then you can even add 3D objects in the mix you can get more models, you can crop stuff, you can rotate stuff and work with 3D graphics okay and that's only one of the examples of what you can do on this device I don't expect advanced Photoshop or advanced anything it's an Intel Pentium CPU in the end and it's time as I said before for the verdict of the device now on the pro side it's got a nice design it's a red dot design winner it's made of metal it's I would say reasonably comfy for such a large machine it's got a pretty good performance um, very nice keyboard I actually fell in love with it pretty okay connectivity and okay productivity nice acoustics and on the con side well the storage is kind of limited so we lost quite a few gigabytes installing minute things and I would say the brightness should be a bit better in the future it's a bit pricey the cameras under underwhelming we don't have HDMI and the battery should be better I would recommend this to a journalist or a student one that is not limited by his or her own budget if your media organization is paying for it go ahead and buy it if your parents are paying for it go ahead and buy it otherwise for the same amount of money you're better off with a more premium Chromebook that's my honest opinion and if I were to give it a grade it would be around 8 out of 10